just real quick this is why you don't plug these radios in they might look nice they might be absolutely gorgeous you want to hear what your new favorite song on the AM station sounds like but please 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 don't plug these in see this look at this brittle wiring look at that that's why you don't plug these in I got lucky on this one 99 percent of the wiring is cloth there's four wires in this whole entire radio chassis that's rubber coated and almost all of them had their coating and was intact before I started messing with them moving stuff around that's when it fell off so my initial power up I didn't really hurt nothing but if it had been cracked and the coating had come off that just don't power them up come on be on the safe side it's just better that way so I've been picking pieces of that yellow and green crap out of there the wire coating and we're about ready to replace this little funky jobby right here and this wire is attached to let me find my schematic here we'll, this is on the 12SK7 and it attaches, solders in to pin 1 comes over here and makes a loop around the socket, it's not, not soldered, it makes a loop around the lug for pin 8 crosses over the base of the tube socket and then goes over here and wraps around pin 3 and the end of the wire is just hanging out in no man's land it's not connected to nothing now the other end of this it connects to pin 1 goes down and connects to chassis ground it's connected right to the chassis probably can't see it it's all the way down here very strange I've never seen anything like that but the good thing is I've got me some new green wire we're gonna unsolder him pull him out lay it next to the new wire that way I can get an accurate measurement of what I need cut it tin one end and then actually I've already got I've already got this one end tinned already and install it down in there well our little wrap around wire is out of there that's all the bigger he was and it's very strange all the coating came off while I was working on it, of course. And it's just, it's everywhere. It's here. I took the radio chassis and tipped it up. And that's all rubber wire coating. But what this wire did, here's our 12SK7. This is pin number one. This is where it was soldered firmly to. It come over here and it made a loop around pin number eight crossed over the tube socket and made a loop around pin 4 and then just hung out there in midair. It had the coating on it. It was coated. So here's our replacement. We're soldered into pin 1. We come over here, we made our loop around 8. We come across and we made a loop around 4. And then the end of our wire is just hanging here. Now what the clip's doing is holding it in place because my wire is a little bit more springier than what this old stuff was. It's it's uh, stranded copper, light gauge stranded copper. So what I did was take a little bit of this Loctite control gel super glue and where I made a loop around there I put a couple dabs of super glue and I did the same thing back here on pin 8. So I don't want that coming out of there making contact with anything else. And we'll wait about 10 minutes, we'll take the clip off and we'll make sure everything's okay. Then we can get back at it. And one thing I didn't like whoever put this one meg ohm resistor in here a long time ago just left this bare lead touch right here on the chassis there's a lot of odd connections in here it's just they were bare they weren't touching nothing at the time but why do that why take the chance there's another one in here somewhere I don't remember exactly where it was at and this is our oscillator coil that's what this little white looking thing is right here this is the drawing for it. That's our oscillator coil. And here's that RF choke right here. You said it's an old wax capacitor wire wrapped around it. Comes off of the switch. Comes off the switch right here. Wire wraps around and it goes to ground right here. The capacitor lead goes to the ground. The, the blue wire 
once it's wrapped around here, goes over here to pin one, two, three on the audio output tube. Uh, it's about six o'clock. We've made nice progress today. I'm not going to go ahead and restuff these little tubular capacitors. I'm going to let this one go this time. And that'll give me some capacitors that I can kind of play around with and uh, contemplate restuffing the next radio comes along. I can kind of melt these off, uh, heat these up with my heat gun, and we'll see how easy the insides pull out. See how it goes. Our new rebuilt electrolytic capacitors are in. They're firmly mounted. They aren't going to go nowhere. Our new wiring has been replaced all the way throughout. Our cheesy little whatever this is has been fixed. <laughs> I still don't know what that thing is. Um, this one capacitor has been replaced. I still have one, two, and three. I'm probably going to leave this guy in here. He's okay. He's modern. I'm not going to mess with him. This one mega ohm resistor that's set right here, that big brown dog bone, I pulled that out because I had to dress that lead. They had that lead brushing right up against the metal on the chassis, and we don't want that. I mean, that obviously does not go to ground. It goes over here to the, uh, the uh, positive side of the electrolytic capacitors, and then traced back over here and went back to a rectifier socket. So it had a hot voltage on it and uh, it was grounding out to the chassis. So I went ahead, pulled it out, I set my meter just for the hell of it, the 2 mega ohm range. I thought, well, I'll test that while I got it out, and we'll see what it reads. Well, that ain't nothing anywhere near where it's supposed to be. It's pretty much dead shorted. So we drop it down in the lower range, 200 kilo ohm, or 200,000 ohm, I should say. 1.3? That don't seem right. So we go over here to where our new resistor's at, which I soldered him to the lead with the electrolytics rod. Didn't want to mess around with that. We'll hook up our. Oops, got bumped the range back up to 2 mega ohm. We'll hook that up. Come on. These doggone leaves on this thing. So roughly nine hundred and fifty thousand ohms. That's pretty close. That's better than the last one. At least I don't have to drop the range down to even begin it. So this is where we're going to stop at for tonight. Like I said, we got a capacitor, capacitor, capacitor. Pull them out. These little domino caps that are in here. I'm going to leave them okay. They test fine. They're a, a mica substance or a hard plastic substance of some kind. They don't seem to go bad. It's actually one, two two of them in here. What I did with these electrolytics is I went ahead and combined the old lead back to the new lead on the uh, radial cap that I had in here and then I heat shrink the lead. Now this one's bare because it comes over and connects right into the tube socket right here so I left him alone. This is a rather positive lead right here going back over to the rectifier tube. Actually this one here goes back to the audio output tube and this one here goes back to the rectifier tube. And this one goes to our 12SK7 right here on pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on pin 6. And then we fancy ground them up, everything up. That's our ground. These are our black leads are for our capacitors. Here and here. So before we're done, we'll go through and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Nothing's touching anything. Whoever put capacitors in this at one point used long lead capacitors, and they left them long, so they they sit. They should be like down in here, so they're sitting like curve over here against the outer edge of the chassis. It just doesn't seem right, but whatever. They did what they did to make it run. 
I noticed I got one block here on my back. I gotta re-glue him. It won't be nothing. But there's the trash pot so far. All of our crumbly bumbly wire. And this is the inside of out of that uh, this bugger right here. So there we are. I'm gonna stop there for the night, and uh, we'll pick up next time. Hey guys, the recap's complete. I gotta tell you, they stuck some caps in this poor little radio in some pretty awkward spots, but it's probably a lot easier than some of the other sets that. Uh, were designed to have little capacitors stuffed here and there. This little guy down here and this one right here was two kind of a pain in the butts to get into. This one won't look bad, but he bridges between the audio output transformer and uh, over here on uh, pin 8 of the audio output tube. It's the audio coupling cap. Kind of a bugger to get in there. Our new line cord is on. And I want to say something. If you take dressing off of a lead when you take a cord or a capacitor or something like that out of the circuit when you replace it with the new put the lead dressing back on it's there for a reason uh, they designed it that way so please try to put it back on there either reuse the piece that's there if it's in good shape or try to find something suitable a replacement uh, be it a heat shrink tube or uh, some kind of a, a lead dressing of some sort so the new cord is on all we like now is a smoke test. Go through here real good, make sure there's no bits and pieces and shorten out any of the tube sockets. All the wires are good, nothing's touching. And we will fire this pup up. One thing I did want to mention before we turn this over and, and uh, try it out for the maiden voyage. This little guy right here, this is an RF choke assembly. I'm leaving him alone. Basically what that is is a, a tap off of the volume pot comes over here and taps into one side of this capacitor and then off of that lead there's another wire soldered to that that wraps around that's this dark right here, that's a wire that wraps around. The whole thing's dipped in wax and then the other lead, the other end of this capacitor which is the negative side, this hooks into the positive side goes over and connects the chassis ground now, I don't have anything to make that assembly up with. I mean, yeah, granted, I could take some wire, some light gauge wire, say like this stuff right here, and uh, wrap it around a, an equivalent capacitor, you know, like this guy right here. I could, I could wrap it around her, but I wouldn't get the correct amount of turns, old versus new. So, the radio was functioning before the recap with that in there, and until it starts to show signs that that's failing or something else is going wrong, um that's going to stay in there. Now just another note too, these little mica domino type capacitors. Let me get a pointer. There's one right here and there's another one right here. These are not very failure prone. I mean sure they do go bad with age but they're pretty stable. They're an old school mica type capacitor and we will just leave them in there. Um, according to schematic one of those is a 500 micro microfarad and the other one is a 250 micro microfarad, which basically is picofarad, you know. Um, we're going to leave them alone. And uh, hope that they'll be okay. So I'll quit jibber jabbering. I'll give this a good once over, make sure nothing's shortened out, everything looks good, and we will light this pup up. Let's take a little closer look inside of this. Hopefully, the red dot that means the camera's recording won't interfere much. This is how I go through them when I'm done. I take a little a little mag light there. And I poke around, I look in there. Check everything out real good and thoroughly. And that's why you want to do a thorough cleaning of your chassis when you're done. Look at all the crap that come out of there. There's, most of this is uh, rubber wire coating that was old brittle wire and stuff but sure enough in there there's some pieces of solder there's a few pieces of lead cut off try to make sure you go through your chassis when you're done that none of this is laying around in there and it's another good tip to uh, clean your solder joints with alcohol it just cleans them up uh, gets rid of that old nasty flux and makes them look a lot nicer
Well, I don't know what I did to it, but I evidently have the touch for killing these things straight out. Did nothing to this thing but replace caps, replace one resistor, restuffed the electrolytics, which I have no voltage to whatsoever. I'm missing screen voltages, I'm missing plate voltages off the tubes. What in the fuck? As you can see, my electrolytic capacitors are nothing. There's, there's not shit. There's 117 volts coming out of the Variac back here right now. Okay, this is freaking stupid. Let me show you something here. I hook up to the capacitors in the radio. There's no power applied to this radio right now. But yet those capacitors are charging from what? Now, the switch is on. I'll turn the Variac on. Now watch. It'll light up bright. It'll dim way down. And the voltage across the capacitors flies away. <laughs> Got 1.0 vo volts on that. You shut it back off. come right back. Something's grounded out somewhere. I can't find it where it's at. I cleaned the tube pins. The tube pins and sockets were filthy on this thing. It's a wonder it was working to begin with. I don't understand it at all. I know these capacitors are not wired backwards. I tested them and triple tested them and quadruple tested them before I filled them tubes full of wa uh, glue. I know they're not wrong. Besides, I wired my negatives with black wires and left the positives bare wire. And I'm not getting any charge to these capacitors whatsoever. I got power into my power switch and power into my rectifier tube. And I got proper voltage on certain pins on the rectifier tube. Across the plate, the B minus, I should have AC line voltage. I'm within two volts of that. Uh, the cathode, cathode to B minus should be 105 volts. I'm about 89 volts on that. The 12 SA7GT, the plate voltage to B minus is not there. The screen voltage to B minus is there. Odd. What do I do to these damn things to make them do this? Uh. Alright guys, for tonight, that's going to be it. I'm going to upload this atrocity and call it part three. Guess I got that touch, huh?